a very good morning to all. Uh, welcome to the Microasia talk series for the beginners. It's a great, great pleasure for me to introduce our uh, today's uh, speaker, eminent personality, Professor Samantha Chandranath Karunaratna. Uh, today, he is enriching us with a very interesting topic uh, on uh, mushroom identification. Uh, Professor Samantha did his PhD from Maflim University, Thailand. He, uh, he had eight years teaching experience in the field, uh, in the field of mushroom uh, research. Uh, in the field of research, he is an expert in phylogenetic analysis, mycota taxonomy, mushroom uh, domestication, fung and fungal diversity. He has awarded uh, to his credit uh, seven major awards in his credits from recognized organizations. Uh, Professor Samantha is also involved in several uh, projects uh, in Thailand. He's also the editor for various uh, recognized international peer reviewed journals. Uh, to his credits, he has 191 research publications. Uh, most of them are uh, limelight publications in mushroom research across the globe. And uh, with, with this brief introduction, I welcome uh, Professor uh, Samantha to proceed with his uh, presentation. Sam, uh, up to you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rajesh, for the introduction. So, um, without taking uh, much time, so. I'll start uh, my presentation today. So the presentation today is uh, is mushroom identification for beginners. Good morning, uh, good afternoon to you all who are joining uh, around the world for the uh, presentation on uh, mushroom identification for beginners. So I'll try to uh, share some of my experience on mushroom identification. So don't think that uh, mushroom identification you can do uh, in overnight. This is a very uh, like complex field. So you need a lot of experience, but I'll try to give you uh, my experience so in the future, you'll be able to identify uh, the mushrooms, at least the common ones. Shana, uh, next slide, please. Yeah, let's see what are mushrooms. As you know, mushrooms you can see in different shapes, different colors. So mushrooms are actually uh, the fruiting bodies of fungi, which contains the uh, the reproductive spores, what we call um, basidiospores. spores. Next slide, please. So let's see why we uh, collect mushrooms, or why we bother about these mushrooms. So as you know, mushroom uh, forays, what we call foray, um, are the, uh, the excursions of uh, uh, the field investigation of mushrooms. So there are different reasons why people collect mushrooms. So some people collect mushrooms uh, because of their uh, enthusiasts of uh, mushrooms. And um, some people, because of uh, they like to do it as a hobby. So some people because of curiosity and the scientific interest and some people like to take some uh, photographs nice photographs of mushrooms so and some others like to extract these uh, medicinal compounds or uh, uh, the um, industrially impo important uh, chemicals from mushrooms and some people of course like to collect mushrooms because of food and we call uh, mycophagy for this uh, the eating of fungi or the mushrooms so um, here we mostly discuss uh, why we need uh, to identify mushrooms because of the scientific interest next slide please 
so these are some more of the important tips for collecting mushrooms so when you are in the forest for collecting mushrooms um check what are the host or substrates or the associated trees that you find these mushrooms and also collect the fruit bodies of all the stages whenever possible so you know um, when you see the mushrooms growing you can see uh, most of the time all the stages like button stage and medium uh, grown stage and fully grown stage so try to collect all these stages because for identification all the stages are important so and when you collect mushrooms you need something to uh, store your mushrooms so we normally use plastic boxes you know the boxes with the compartments these are good to store small and medium sized mushrooms and for bigger mushrooms you can use uh, wax papers or aluminum foil and then you can store them in a basket so you can see in this uh, picture a uh, mushroom collecting basket and um, <clears throat> the other important thing is uh, take a very good uh, photograph um, when you are in the field so a good photograph is very important for identification uh, because it shows all the characteristics of the the mushroom so if you have a bad photo and you cannot use it for identification so both upper side and lower side showing all the characteristics um, take a good photograph next slide please so as i mentioned you can see in this picture this is a amanita phalloides you can see all the stages uh, showing in this picture uh, from the button stage to the fully mature stage so you can see the ring and the volva at the base and all the other characteristics are um, very clear next slide please so as i mentioned you can use these kind of uh, boxes you can see the compartments so you can store your mushrooms in these compartments and don't forget uh, just keep some mosses or uh, fresh leaves inside the boxes with the mushroom so that you can keep the moisture inside and your mushroom will not dry and also the mushroom will not move when you uh, bring your box into your lab next slide please and here you can see a mushroom collecting basket so you can see uh, you can uh, use this kind of basket to store your big mushrooms that are wrapped with um, the aluminum foil or the wax paper next slide please as i mentioned a good photograph is very important so you have to spend some time in the field and focusing the mushroom and taking some good photographs this is a uh, one um, mycologist from Belgium, when she was in uh, Thailand, uh, she uh, like very much um, used her energy to take good photographs. Next slide, please. So this is uh, Steve Export. Of course, uh, you might all you might uh, know very well. He is one of the best uh, mushroom photographers in the world. And he takes very nice uh, photographs um, that can be used easily in, uh, in publications because you can see all the characteristics very well. Next slide, please. Yeah, this is one of uh, his photographs. Amanita, um, this is um, one of the uh, Amanita species. Uh, you can see. Uh, the volva and the 
the striations in the stipe and the ring and all the other characteristics very well. Next slide, please. So in this picture also, you can see uh, agaricus um, subrufacens. So uh, as you can see, both upper and lower sides can be seen in this picture. And you can see the details of the ring and details of the cap. Next slide, please. And this picture also, you can see uh, the upper part and the lower part, the, uh, the um, um, gills and the ring. Next slide, please. So um, depending on the different types, so there are different groups of uh, mushrooms, but this is not a scientific um, grouping. This is just a technical uh, grouping that um, is done um, in order to identify different major groups. So you can see this is a gilt mushroom. That means uh, this group of mushrooms uh, they have gills and cantrellus. That means uh, the mushrooms look like uh, the famous mushroom uh, cantrellus. So this uh, this group include the mushrooms look like this and tooth fungi. So this group has the mushroom that has the tooth like uh, projections uh, underside and coral. Uh, or um, club fungi. So they look like corals or club. So this group has uh, mushrooms look like this. And jelly fungi. So the, the mushrooms look like jelly. And uh, crust fungi. So they uh, usually grow on uh, wood, like crust. And bolids. So uh, these mushrooms, you can see the pores underside. So this group has a lot of uh, different genera and polypores and uh, cones. So these are hard uh, mushrooms that grow on wood. Next slide, please. And this is the other one, bird nest fungi. So they look like a bird nest. So that's why this group is called bird nest fungi and stink horns. So this, uh, this group of fungi are very uh, smelly and uh, so uh, to attract uh, the insect, so they have this smelly small mass on the top. And the other one is uh, puffballs and earth stars. So they look like um, stars. So they call earth stars because they grow on soil and uh, um, puffballs. You know, like they are like balls and uh, morals. Morals look like this. And cup fungi, it's like cup. And so this group of fungi uh, are given the names uh, because of their shapes uh, and uh, their texture. So this is not a scientific classification. This is just a, a simple grouping. Next slide, please. So as you know, in mushroom identification, spore color is very important. So we, um, it is important, uh, we do a spore print uh, when you find a mushroom to, in order to uh, see the color of spores. Because uh, spores alone, we, can, we cannot see their colors, but when uh, spore deposit as a spore print, we can see the color very clearly. So uh, different mushrooms have different mushroom colors, uh, spore colors. So for example, Amanita white, Volvariella pink, chlorophyllum uh, olive green, Agaricus chocolate brown. So when you do a spore print, do it on both white and black paper together because if if the mushroom spore is a light color 
you can see the spores on the dark paper. If the mushroom color is dark, spore color is dark, then you can see the spore print on the white paper. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, you can see here the black and white, the background. So you put the mushroom cap in between. So you can get the spore print uh, on the paper, even if it is a light or dark spots. And you can mention all the details like this. Next slide, please. So the morphology is one of the important uh, characteristics when we come into identification of mushrooms. Actually, this is the most important. Most people think the phylogeny is the most important. Actually, it is not in fungal or mushroom identification. The most important thing is the morphological uh, characterization. So um, in general morphology, we record these uh, characteristics uh, like shape of the cap and the cap's texture and um, the margin of the, the cap and the gills and the way the gills attach to the, the stipe or the cap and uh, shape of the stem and the colors of the stem and the veil or the ring and whether it has a cortina and whether it has a vulva and uh, the color of the basidiospores and all these are very important for the identification of, of mushrooms. So uh, normally mycologists use a standard set of terms when describing these features. Next one, please. So this is a, a, a general um, uh, agaric, how it looks like. So you can see the upper part we call pileus or the cap. And the remnants you can see on the cap, we call universal whale remnants. Uh, that's what you see uh, in some mushrooms, like scales on the cap. And the hymenium, or we call the gills or lamella. And, and the remnant of the partial veil, you can see on the stipe as a veil, or we call annulus. And this is the stipe or the stem of the mushroom. And some mushrooms, you can see a vulva or the bulb at the base of the uh, stipe. And this, this is the remnants of the universal veil. And then you can see the mycelial threads, which are used uh, to attach uh, to the uh, substrate. Next one, please. So as I mentioned, uh, the mycologists use different terms to describe the different parts of the mushroom. So you can see here, gill attachment, we use different terms, free, adnate, adnex, imaginate, simulate, decurrent, uh, subdecurrent, like these terms. And cap shapes also, we use different terms, avoid uh, cylindrical, like these terms. And stipe shape also, we use different terms, central, eccentric, cylindrical, like these terms. So when we describe a mushroom for a scientific publication, we need to use these kind of um, the terms. Next one, please. And this is uh, to describe the cap margin. Um, also, we use different terms. You can see smooth and entire, um, scalloped, and uh, splitting, uplifted, all these different terms. Next one, please. 
So as I mentioned, some mushrooms, they have whale, or we call uh, annulus. This is the, the remnants of uh, the universal whale. So as you know, when the mushroom is uh, small or in the button stage, the whole mushroom is covered with the universal veil. And when the mushroom opens, so some um, parts of the mushroom, the universal veil remains on the top of the cap. So you can see in this Amanita species, um, these are the remnants of the universal veil. So we call the scales on the cap. And some remain as a ring. So we call ring or the or the wave and some remain at the base so we call it uh, a bulb or the volva so this is why you see uh, in different mushrooms they have a ring or veil and scales on the cap and the volva at the base so all these are the parts of universal veil Next one, please. And some mushrooms, they have a special um, uh, part called cortina. So this cortina is like a, a spider web. So if you look at, at the underside of uh, the mushroom, so you can see uh, like a um, cobweb or the um, um, spider web. So because of the, uh, the, the spores falls onto this uh, web, sometimes you can see it as a colorful. That means um, the, the genus, this uh, genus, Cortinarius, has rusty brown spores. So when these spores fall into this uh, cog web or this uh, the spider web-like thing, so you can see it like a, a rusty brown color uh, like this. So this is a characteristic feature to identify this genus Cortinarius. So because of this Cortina, this genus is called Cortinarius. Next one, please. So in mushroom um, description, um, Order is an important character. So you need to check the order of the mushroom when you find a mushroom. So some mushrooms, they have very unique orders. So for example, this Clitopilus prunulus. So it has a farinaceous order. Farinaceous means like a flower order. So when you smell, um, uh, by um, smelling uh, some mushrooms, you can you can identify uh, some specific uh, groups of mushrooms. For example, this Clitopilus. So next one, please. So these are some of the examples for these mushroom orders. So um, as I mentioned, this Farinaceous or mealy order. Um, you can uh, find in uh, these groups polypores, polyporous um, squamulus, agrosibi paradox, mycena uh, graniculata, tricholoma acutum, uh, clitopilus prunellus, entoloma ablogium. These uh, mushrooms, you can find this farinaceous or mealy order. So Fishy or shrimp-like order you can uh, find in Lactarius volumus, Prasula, Serenimpla, and uh, spermatic you can find in uh, Inosibi, and anise order you can find Clitosibi odara and some species of Agaricus, and um, like green corn order you can uh, find in Inosibi, bleach you can find in uh, Mycena. Uh, swamp gas or coal tar find in uh, tricholoma. Um, you can find uh, apricot smell in cantrellus. 
and almond oda you can find in agaricus dalic oda you can find in uh, marasmius phenolic you can find in agaricus all or strongly unpleasant odor you can find in stink horns and uh, lepiota cristata so once i heard from a, a mushroom odor expert uh, some people who really care about uh, the mushroom odors they even don't use mushroom repellents or uh, perfumes when they go collecting mushrooms because the smell can be disturbed by uh, your perfume and these uh, kind of sprays. So next one, please. And determining the taste. So this is very important to remember. So when you taste some mushrooms, so you have to tear open the cap and take a very small piece from the cap and um, then you can put it in your tongue uh, at the uh, tip of the tongue and see how you feel it so some mushrooms it give a burning um, taste to your tongue and soon after you uh, tasted so remember to rinse your mouth uh, with some water don't swallow uh, the water and be careful about the genus Amanita because some of the deadly poisonous mushrooms are in this group so you should be careful uh, not to taste this kind of uh, mushrooms so uh, for me I always advise if you know this genus uh, uh, Amanita so don't try to taste it. For other genera, if you know um, that they don't have these kind of uh, uh, deadly poisonous mushrooms, then you can taste uh, this um, uh, kind of genera like uh, Lactarius rasula. Um, it is very important to uh, know the taste because uh, it's one of the characteristics of uh, these mushrooms. Next one, please. So there are different chemicals also we use for mushroom identification. So ammonia or ammonium uh, hydroxide and uh, potassium hydroxide uh, and these uh, iron salts like uh, ferric sulfate. And um, this uh, Schaeffer's reaction is very uh, special reaction or the test we use for agaricus. So in this test, we use aniline and uh, concentrated nitric acid. So you cross one line with uh, aniline on the cap of the mushroom. And then you cross the line with concentrated nitric. And then if there is a reaction in the crossing, so if it is positive, so you get a orange, um a color reaction so that means that agaricus belongs to the section that is senses so if the Schaeffer reaction positive uh, um, that means uh, those uh, agaricus belong to flavicentis so uh, Schaeffer's negative also an important character uh, in mushroom identification next one please So here you can see um, some uh, bolid species. So when you um, add uh, this ammonia or the um, uh, KOH, so you can see this kind of uh, color reactions. Sometimes it uh, turns into green and later it turns into brown. So uh, this is also one of the characteristics in uh, bolids. Uh, next one, please. So as I mentioned, this is the, the Schaeffer's reaction. So you can see when you cross a line, and one with uh, aniline and uh, the other one with uh, concentrated nitric. So here you get a 
uh, color reaction. Next one, please. So field nodes are very important in uh, mushroom identification. So um, you have to record these essential things in your field nodes, date, location, habitat, substrate, and habit of the mushroom. Next one, please. Um, so for the agarics, bolids, so these characteristics are very important. The cap, gills, paws, stem, propping color, and uh, any other uh, distinguishing features that you can see in these uh, uh, mushrooms. Next one, please. So this is uh, one of the photographs that uh, we took uh, during our um, field uh, excursions in uh, China. So after collection, you can see we uh, sort the mushrooms, and then we uh, record all the uh, macro characteristics of the mushrooms. Next one, please. So um, not only macroscopic characteristics, microscopic characteristics are also very important for mushroom identification. So, <clears throat> so you need to section the mushroom in order to see the microscopic characteristics of mushrooms. So this is how you have to section it. So you take um, a part of um, the cap or the pileus and then you section this way. Uh, then you can uh, cut the, the fertile part or the gills, and then you can observe it under the microscope. Some place. So when you observe under the microscope, you should see these parts um, in the gills. So the top part, we call pilipelis. That means the top of the cap here. We call it pilipelis. And below pilipelis, you can see the hypodermis. And um, so below that, you see the, the pileus. And uh, we call this um, hymenium part uh, subhymenium and uh, hymenium and depending on the the different cells so we call them different names so the the bigger cells you can see um, in this part we call pleurocystidium and um, also the the cells that contain the spores or the basidial spores, we call basidium or basidia. Um, and the uh, immature, the basidia, we call basidioles. And the cells that you can see at the tip of the, um, the gills, we call uh, chelocystidia. Next one, please. So, um these these are the uh, um the different parts you can see in the gill surface or the hymenium so as i mentioned the bigger cells you can see they are cystidia because cystidia and one explanation for the purpose of cystidia are to keep the the gills apart so if, if you don't have these bigger cells in between, so gills can touch each other, and this will stop spreading the basidial spores. So this, these bigger cells keep the two um, gills apart, so you can, uh, the, the spores can disperse easily. Next one, please. 
So Basidio's pores, there are different shapes. So you can see the um, ellipsoid and uh, um, oblong um, globos, here globos, ellipsoid like this, and oblong like this, and uh, nodulose like this in inosibi, and cylindric, very long, and uh, fusiform, like this shape. Next one, please. And basidiospore also have ornamentation. That means on the surface, you can see different patterns. So here you can see watered. That means uh, you can see these projections. And um, spiny, you can see like spines on the surface. And reticulate, you can see like this kind of patterns. And striate, you can see like this kind of patterns on the surface. Next one, please. So this is how you see the, uh, the reticulate spores under the microscope. So you can see the uh, different patterns on the surface. Next one, please. And this is an example of a smooth spore. You can see the, the, the surface is very smooth. No any projection or any special feature. Next one, please. So basidios for color is important, as I mentioned. So, um, so different groups have different colors. So white, you can see in these groups, pink in these groups, purple brown, rusty yellow, earth brown, brown, black. So depending on the color, so these group can be identified. Next one, please. So the basidia, as I mentioned, normally one basidia, uh, basidium contains four basidiospores, but sometimes you can see three, two, or even one. So these uh, things that carry uh, the basidiospores, we call sterigma or sterigmata. Next one, please. So this is how you actually see them like normally for basidiospores in one basidium, like this, and sometimes two. Next one, please. So there are several types, as I mentioned. So mostly it is uh, four, but sometimes two, and also um, many, uh, like branched like this, and different shapes in different uh, group of uh, mushrooms. Next one, please. So cystidia, also one of the important micro characteristic. So depending on the place that uh, you find the cystidia, we have different names. So if you find cystidia on the pileus or the cap, we call pileocystidia. So if you find them in lamella sides or the gill sides, we call pleurocystidia. And if you find them in lamella edges, we call chelocystidia. Or if you find them in stipe, we call holocystidia. So depending on the place, there are different names. And so we have to consider about the, the shape, size, ornamentation, and color as well. Next one, please. So cystidia also have different shapes. And these different shapes have different terms. Filiform, cylindrical, ventriculose, cylindroclavate, clavate, uh, aspero, pediculate, napiform, um, turbinate, vesiculate, Piriform, so you can see different shapes. Next one, please. So, um, I think uh, the other 
part of my uh, lecture, I'm going to show some of the examples of uh, different genera. So since it is now 45 minutes, I think uh, we can take a 10 minutes break. And after that, we can continue. I'll show you some uh, major genera and their characteristic features. So meanwhile, if you have some questions, you can ask. If anyone have questions, please. Yeah, Krishna, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, how to identify the poisonous from apart from the edible mushrooms? Yeah, this is uh, a most frequently asked question. Um, so, the, there is no universal test uh, up to now to identify uh, whether a mushroom is edible or not but there are different uh, tests localized tests to identify different groups of mushrooms so for example uh, one test is uh, this uh, Schaeffer reaction as i mentioned earlier okay this test is used in aggregates um so if if the mushroom is uh, Schaeffer positive so this is not a, a, a poisonous group of agaricus. So if it is um, Schaeffer negative, that, mean it, that means there are some poisonous uh, groups in that uh, Schaeffer negative uh, mushroom. So like this, there are localized tests. Also in agaricus, when you bruise the the um, type of the mushroom. If okay. the mushroom color goes yellow or the um, orange, so this is a, a poisonous group of mushroom. So, like this, we have different uh, localized tests for different groups, but as a whole, we don't have any um, like uh, universal test to check whether a mushroom is edible or poisonous. So you need to be very careful because some mushrooms, um, the edible ones and the poisonous ones, they look alike. So it is very hard to uh, distinguish uh, those mushrooms. For example, uh, Macrolepiota and Chlorophyllum. So mm -hmm. Macrolepiota, uh, the edible group, uh, you can see the uh, white uh, gills or the white spores, but in uh, the poisonous group, uh, chlorophyllum has olive green uh, spores or the gills. So this is the the only characteristic, the the morphological characteristic you can use to distinguish uh, this so two groups. Is poison or yeah. so coming to the cultivation of mushroom, usually we can see the cultivation of mushroom in soil. And also, sometimes we can do it on the dried grass, dried grass, and also with the combination of uh, soil and the cocoa pit. So, which kind of cultivation uh, gives high yield? It's in soil or the dried grass of soil with the cocoa pit combination? Actually, we choose uh, these two major uh, media okay. based on the um, um, the mushroom type, like if the mushroom naturally grows on wood or mm. wood based substrate, mm. then we use wood uh, or the sawdust or wood based uh, substrate to grow the mm. mushroom. Mm. But if the mushroom grows on soil, mm. then we use the compost mm. uh, to grow the mushroom. So it's not about which one gives the best yield. But we select these two um, major media depending on the nature of the, the mushroom. Okay. 
so especially coming to the white mushroom uh, as we discussed now uh, on soil or the grass which is highly nutritious so um, for my um, opinion mm. uh, the natural growing one and the artificial cultivated one both yes. should have the same nutritional values but i know there are some uh, folklore that okay. people believe the wild mushrooms are more nutritious than the cultivated ones but until now i don't see anyone like have done any research to show uh, which one is nutritious but uh, i am pretty sure that both have the same nutritional values there shouldn't be changes so there will be no cultivation uh, parameter changes like for example in the soil uh, it may give loads of uh, good nutritious uh, and also we can sometimes use the cow dung as a biogas and bio fertilizers to Im immune uh, the plant or the body system but coming to the dried grass and all maybe some cultivation factors will be reduced so how come the nutrition will be same on both the platforms criteria yeah i mean the nutritional value uh, of the mushroom is not something that you can uh, like induce by <coughs> the growing sub substrate but okay. uh, you should know that like fungi normally absorb the heavy metals and uh, like chemical things in the soil yes. so that's why we always advise people don't collect mushrooms from contaminated habitats okay. because then these mushrooms uh, have high chance to contain heavy metals or chemicals Poison. yes yeah and but i know now like people are trying to um, induce the nutritional values by adding some um, like compounds artificially into substrates because the mycelia can absorb those yes like uh, the beta glucan mm. so people are now adding to the substrate so that mushroom can absorb mm. and uh, the beta glucan value of the mushroom increases so the mushroom also the price of the mushroom also increase because of this okay will the white mushrooms uh, have the amount of vitamin d is good when compare uh, for us yeah i mean in button mushroom i uh, know that uh, the white mushrooms they okay. have uh, high vitamin uh, than the uh, the darker ones so uh, Sheetal, please go ahead with your question. Uh, Hello. Good morning, sir. Am I audible? Yeah. Uh, uh, sir, I want to ask you about the position of the pleurocystidia and the chelocystidia. You mentioned that the position will be different for both of them. I want to ask, uh, is there any chance that we can get the morphological distinction between these two within the same species? Uh, Apart from yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's possible. Um, that's why you should uh, carefully check uh, the cystidia from which place you, uh, uh, like when you section the mushroom and then when you observe, you should check which place you get uh, the cystidia. So um, sometimes you get um, like different shapes, but sometimes you get uh, the same shape of the cystidia. But uh, uh, this place you find the cystidia is very important. So that's how you give the different uh, uh, terms um, depending on this place of the cystidia. Uh, sir, can you please uh, explain once again the position of pleuro and the chelocystidia? Because I uh, yeah. often so, get confused with the position. And uh, yeah. I, so when I take the section, it makes me difficult to identify the position. Yeah, so you want me to show the, yeah. the slide? Right. No, slide. Yeah. So, Dr. Shana, could you please uh, share the...
Yeah, right, this one. Yeah, yeah. So next one, please. Yeah. So you see, uh, if you find the cystidia at the tip of the gill, mm -hmm. so you call it callocystidia. Okay. So if you find it um, at edges, at the edges, so we you call it uh, pleurocystidia. Okay, so uh, the chelocystia will, will be on the tip. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Dave, you can ask your question. Dave Data, you can ask your question. Dr. Dev? Dr. Dev, please unmute yourself. Sorry, I could not unmute it. Now I, sorry. Uh, thank you very much, Pro um, Professor Samantha, for the wonderful presentation. Yeah, I would like to ask one thing. Uh, most of the times when I collect some mushrooms from a marine environment, they are non-sporulating. So is there any other uh, uh, in the, I mean, artificial conditions I can provide to sporulate in the in vitro conditions? So you mean after you collect the mushroom? Yes, yes. Uh, while collect, after collecting, the, they are not sporulating. Most of them I, I collected, they are non sporulating and I am I'm unable to raise them as a new species or existing species because I could not find out the uh, they are like majority of them are unidentified when I do molecular analysis also. So you are not talking about the culture, right? You are talking about I'm the fruiting talking bodies, about right? Yes, yes. I have directly sequence from fruit bodies also. Yeah, so uh, that's why I mentioned earlier that when you collect mushrooms, you should always observe uh, whether there are all the stages of mushrooms you can find there, like from the button stage to the fully mature stage. But sometimes when you collect uh, uh, the uh, unmature stage, but you can keep it uh, in your lab in a humid environment, uh, like a humid chamber, so that mushroom can mature and then, uh, like I observed this uh, in uh, some mushrooms like agaricus, when we collect, the gills are white in color. But when you keep it for some time, so you can see the color changes to pink first, and then uh, to dark uh, chocolate brown. So you can follow this also if you um, like don't find uh, these mature specimens in the field, but you can collect impenture ones and then keep in a moist chamber and let it uh, mature in, inside the chamber. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Sir, one more thing, like, uh, I have one more question, like, how do we distinguish the asexual morphs when we culture from the uh, ascomestis to bestomestis? Or is there any of the distinguishing, distinguishing characteristics uh, for non-sporulating fungi, fungi in, in both of these cases? Uh, sorry, could you please repeat the question? I mean to say that in asexual morph stages of uh, bestomestis and mm -hmm. in contrast to this asexual morphs in ascomestis, is there, is there any other more micro, microscopic characteristics where we can delineate? You mean the asexual morph and the sexual morph? No, no, no. Uh, in comparison with this, both asexual morphs of ascomestis and bestomestis. Sir, like uh, clamp connections and all these things may be there, right? In, septa, uh, in mycelial stages, I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, in uh, basidium it you can identify it uh, with the... The clamp connection. Yes. Uh, so that is the only like distinguishing characteristic you can find in uh, basidiomycete uh, to uh, distinguish it from uh, ascomycete. So other than that, in asexual morph, uh, there are no uh, distinguishing uh, morphological characteristics. Thank you. Rajesh, Rajesh, can I ask? 
Yeah, yes, please. Yes, please, sir. Uh, so, uh, uh, Dr. Sam, I want to follow it up with uh, Dr. Devdatta's question. I, am, am I audible? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm audible, sir. Yeah, my, my point is, can we use, I know, probably clam collection is the only thing which is very unique to the anamorphs of the pseudomycetes, right? Uh, especially, yeah. But do you think we can use uh, proteomics data or another non-genomic data to differentiate these anamorphs of pseudomycetes and uh, ascomycetes? Uh, you mean to use the the proteomics to distinguish uh, the anamorphic stage from uh, 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 the the telomorphic uh, stage? No, no, I am talking about the anamorphs of basidomycetes and ascomycetes. Okay, only distinguishing character is the clamp connection in the anamorphs of the basidomycetes, right? But in addition yeah. to that, can we use some protein data or any non-genomic data? To differentiate the anamorphs of the anam acids with from that from that from the basidium acids. Uh, actually, I don't know the details, but uh, maybe it is possible with the uh, the proteomics uh, or the genomic data to distinguish these two, because uh, like ascomycetes and basidium acids, they are two. Uh, different groups like evolutionary uh, one is higher one is lower so it is probably possible but uh, I have no uh, idea or the details uh, regarding this uh, identification thank you sir uh, dr. Rajesh I have one request dr. Yes, Rajesh, sir. if possible please allow Krishna to ask more questions maybe at the end of the hour 20 okay sure sure, sure. we'll do that Jivika, please go ahead with your question. Um, hello, sir. Uh, thank you for your presentation. It was uh, very useful as a beginner for me. So I would like to ask you, uh, if we are in a field visit, is there any tips to follow or differentiate the edible mushroom and poisonous mushroom? Um, yeah, I, I already answered this question. Like. Um, there are yeah. no um, like universal tests, but as I mentioned, there are localized tests for different groups. So, for example, the the Schaeffer's uh, reaction in uh, agaricus, and um, also in agaricus, if you bruise the the stem of the agaricus, if it goes uh, yellow or um, uh, orange in color, so uh, it is a poisonous group. So there are localized tests like this, but as a whole, there is no universal test to distinguish uh, uh, edible mushroom and a poisonous mushroom. There are so many lookalikes. Uh, the edible one and the poisonous one look exactly similar. So you have to be very careful in this uh, regard. So there is no uh, visualization techniques to differentiate. No, don't use visualization vis uh, visualization techniques to identify uh, like uh, edible and poisonous mushrooms. That's why people get poisoned because uh, they easily misidentify the mushrooms. Because, uh, for example, I mentioned that uh, the the macrolepiota and chlorophyllum. So when you see chlorophyllum and macrolepiota, they look exactly similar. But if you look at the underside, uh, the gills, so uh, if you carefully check, you can see the macrolepiota is white gills and uh, the chlorophyllum olive green. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Krishna, go ahead with your question. Yes, sir. So, uh, can we do herbarium sampling for this mushrooms? Yeah, of course, we do herbarium uh, for the mushrooms. Once you uh, finish your morphological examination and uh, the DNA work, so you have to deposit your mushroom, the dry mushroom, 
as a herbarium specimen. Yeah. So on an average, the shelf life of mushrooms? Any mushroom. Sorry? Shelf life. Shelf yeah, shelf life, life shelf varies. Life. Shelf life varies with uh, different uh, mushrooms, like uh, you know, cop coprinellus, coprinus. This kind of uh, mushrooms, their shelf life is very short. So you see the mushroom pop up, and within uh, like a few minutes, if you see again, you uh, see like uh, all the mushrooms are gone. And some mushrooms they have a very long shelf life for example like uh, ganoderma so you can see they uh, remain uh, in the field very very long time so this really depends on different types of mushrooms thank you sir it's been really very insightful session thank you so much you're welcome the krishna uh, krishna the session will continue after the break please be uh, please stay with us thank you Sam, I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. If you have any types, uh, if you don't have any types to compare uh, when you go for the molecular study, uh, you have identified one new specimen. So how will you proceed with it? You mean if I don't find any type, like new type? The types or are not type. available for comparison or uh, verification. So um, if I don't find, uh, then first I will try to um, go into the, the place where the original types have been described. So I try to find some specimens from the, the original location, uh, if there are information available. Then if I don't find any information for the for the type and i i try whether i can find any uh, like description or any um, other uh, material that can be used as a, as a type description so if i don't find in, in case descriptions are available yeah if if the descriptions are available then uh, i compare my one with the the type description and then I can proceed after that do you mean you are going for uh, epitopification yeah that's why I mentioned like I try to um, find the specimen in the original location so if I find uh, the the same uh, specimen in the the same location that uh, I see in the description. So then I go for a uh, epitopification, like um, describe a new type. Like I did uh, some of the mushrooms that have been described from Sri Lanka. So because the old types are not in good condition now, and then we found uh, new collections um, that um, we found the match with the, the original description. And then we uh, described um, new types. Yeah, exactly. All right. Any Dr. more questions from audience? Yeah, I have one question, uh, Dr. Rajesh. Can I ask? Yes. Uh, Sam, I remember you published a paper on the list of uh, edible mushrooms of the world. Yeah. Do you have a list of poison of mushrooms from around the world? Uh, not yet, but uh, we are in the process of uh, writing a review on world's deadliest mushrooms. So this paper, we are going to include uh, what are the, the deadliest mushrooms and what are the other uh, poisonous mushrooms in the world. So in the deadliest category, uh, we um, consider a mushroom is deadliest only when we find some uh, case reports. So if we find case reports of a death of a person, then we include uh, those mushrooms as deadliest mushrooms in the world. But that doesn't mean 
that uh, the other poisonous mushrooms are not dead deer, but the case is we, we uh, did not find any like case reports to support um, um, a death of a person. Thank you. Can I ask uh, one more question, related question? Let, let me ask one anthropocentric question, you know, why humans can eat lots of mushroom, I mean, lot, many types of mushroom, but they are very, very susceptible, vulnerable to some of them. They get indigestion, they get, some of them might die also. Oh, any evolutionary insights into it, Dr. Sam? Yeah, this is uh, this is also one uh, like question that is remained to be answered. So I think um, in the evolutionary process, some of these uh, uh, the toxic genes uh, that uh, evolved in one of the evolutionary steps. So this is also one uh, research that has to be done in the future to find out where this uh, the poisoning of mushroom uh, evolved because as you said it's very interesting because our body uh, we uh, can accept some mushrooms but some mushrooms uh, our body uh, do not accept and there are also people they are mushroom intolerant it means if they eat mushroom they get uh, like uh, stomach problems and because they don't have the the enzymes to digest the mushrooms like uh, uh, chitinase. Thank you, Dr. Sam and uh, Dr. Rajesh. Uh, any more questions from the audience? Ah, Rahul, please call it. Sir, uh, is it possible to uh, notice if if we if your fungi or mushroom is a poisonous or uh, edible by looking at it uh, phylogenetically ah yes sir yeah this one also we um, checked in our review paper whether we can find any relationship of uh, these poisonous groups in phylogeny but in our phylogeny, uh, we could not find any um, like a pattern for the uh, poisonous mushrooms. So at the moment, we also uh, uh, like cannot uh, solidly say that uh, uh, phylogenetically the mushrooms are grouped into one group or not because it's uh, mixed uh, in the phylogeny. So uh, until now, there's no any solid information to um, say that these groups are the uh, poisonous groups and these groups are the edible groups. Because you see, in Amanita, you find both edibles and poisonous ones, and some deadliest ones also there. Sir, is there any poisonous mushrooms in Andhra Pradesh? Sorry? Is there any poisonous poisonous mushrooms in Andhra Pradesh? Um, He's I'm asking not a state uh, in India. Yes, I'm not pretty sure. But there are some poisonous mushrooms uh, in uh, India. Uh, you might have seen like uh, some reports recently about uh, killing some uh, like uh, tea garden workers because of uh, deadly poisonous mushrooms. Ah, yes, so, I hear about. Yeah, so I think uh, in India there are a lot to do uh, because some mushrooms have been identified only using uh, the morphological characteristics. So uh, you need to uh, do phylogeny and then uh, you need to identify those and see um, uh, where they um, where those mushrooms are placed because uh, most of the classification things are now updated. Uh, Rajesh, can I respond to that? Yes, sir, please. Sir. 
Rahul, I am from uh, Andhra, uh, Andhra Pradesh. Actually, I'm not. I'm from. I'm working in Andhra Pradesh in Vishakhapatnam. Ah yes, uh, sir. I know the, my my. No, no. Now the best way to find out the information about the mushroom poisoning in Andhra Pradesh would be look at the news reports, especially from Arakku region, Paderu region, Malakkanigiri region. Okay, uh, so they, there you see people eating wild mushrooms. Okay, That's so I, I assume there would be many poisonous mushrooms in Andhra Pradesh too. But we need to just dig into Google and find out. Thank you. Uh, Krishna, you can ask your question here. Yes, sir. Krishna. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sir, actually, this kind of white mushrooms uh, do have uh, anti-cancer compounds. Uh, so the reason behind the potential cancer uh, fighting properties, like, is there any research going on, sir, regarding this? Yeah, there are so many uh, research on this aspect, like uh, the medicinal aspects of uh, mushrooms. Okay. So as you know, Ganoderma is one of the uh, the best medicinal mushrooms uh, that that has a lot of uh, like properties, like anti-cancer, anti-diabetic, uh, like so many anti uh, like properties. Yes. So by having this all potential benefits like B vitamins, copper, potassium, and rich in everything, uh, can we use mushroom as a nutraceutical supplement? Yeah, of course. There are a lot of uh, nutraceuticals are made from uh, the mushrooms. So um, like uh, the countries like China, uh, the US, Europe, uh, the countries in Europe, so they, uh, they use mushrooms to produce these kind of nutraceuticals but uh, uh, the countries like um, india uh, sri lanka uh, thailand uh, these countries we are still like in the growing stage but i hope in the future uh, yeah, like our countries also use these uh, resources okay, thank you thank you uh, in this uh, latter part, um, I'm going to talk and introduce about uh, some common mushrooms, like common mushroom genera uh, and their characteristics, how you can uh, identify these genera in the field. So here you can see the genus uh, Marasmias. So normally the Marasmias they are minute to medium size and um, so the cap is typically convex this shape and the gills are free so not attached to the um, stipe or sometimes uh, adnex or sometimes adnate and it is rarely decurrent decurrent means uh, the gills can go a um, little bit down to the, the stipe. And the stipe is typically tough. Uh, you can break it like a stick and often very thin and like a wire. And normally the flesh also uh, thin and tough. So this has a white spore print. So usually marasmias, they grow on leaf litter or small twigs. So next slide, please. So Cortinarius. So as I mentioned earlier, this name Cortinarius comes from this Cortina. So the distinguishing characteristic is this Cortina on the uh, lower part so you can see it like a, a spider web uh, but sometimes you don't see it is colorful if if the the web does not contain any uh, spores but if the spores fall onto the the web you can see like uh, the rusty brown uh, the web uh, underside uh, of the uh, mushroom so 
normally the the cotinarias cap and stipe they are dry or slimy and um, the gills uh, they are not um, like slimy or dry and uh, most often the cap is uh, like purple lilac so most of the curtain areas you can see this color the purple or the lilac and the gills are also purple lilac and uh, when um, when the mushroom is young they are um, uh, also uh, you can see the purple or lilac and um, the partial veil as i mentioned uh, or the the cortina uh, sometimes you can see white but when spores uh, fall into that you can see a rusty brown um, and it is mycorrhizal mycorrhizal means they they are always associated with uh, ectomycorrhizal trees so you find this um, often associated with uh, tree roots next one please so coprinoid mushrooms or we call uh, inky caps um, so these mushrooms um, earlier we knew only uh, coprinus but later on um, uh, based on uh, phylogeny uh, they divide uh, these mushrooms into uh, four genera. So now you can see like Coprinus, Parasola, Coprinopsis, and Coprinellus. So all four are in this coprinoid mushrooms. So these are saffrobic mushrooms. Uh, normally they decompose the wood. So um, you find uh, black spore prints and their shelf life is very short so they uh, pop up and then um, like um, vanished after uh, minutes so uh, they call inky caps because uh, when the mushroom matures these uh, fruiting bodies um, they uh, tend to uh, like become a uh, uh, um, liquid and then uh, like you can see like ink uh, on the the mushroom uh, like the, uh, the area that mushroom uh, grows so that's why they are called inky caps um, next one please so this is the the parasola next one please And this is the coprinopsis. So in the first picture, you saw um, coprinus and um, uh, coprinellus. Uh, this is uh, coprinus. This is coprinellus. And then you saw the parasola. Next one. Yeah, this is parasola. And the next one is um, coprinopsis, this one. So all four look very similar, um, but uh, it's very difficult to distinguish them uh, by morphology. But uh, by um, phylogenetic analysis, we can distinguish all these four genera. Next one, please. So the next one is uh, Termitomyces, and this is a very good edible mushroom. Uh, at the moment, all the termitomyces that uh, are known are edibles. So there are no poisonous ones in this group. And um, these mushrooms are always associated with termites. So there are fungus going termites. So always these mushrooms are associated with these fungus growing 
termites. So don't think that all the uh, termites can grow mushrooms. It is not. Only one group we call uh, macrotermitae. So only this group of termites can cultivate these uh, termitomyces. And one distinguishing feature is that there is a very a sharp pointed um, top in these mushrooms. Because when these mushrooms are under the soil, uh, when uh, they pop up, they need to pierce the, uh, the soil and come up. So in order to uh, pierce the soil, so they have this pointed apex. So when you uh, want to uh, make sure that it is a termitomyces, so you can touch on the top here. So you feel the uh, the very sharp uh, pointed uh, top on the uh, top of the mushroom. So all the termitomyces have this uh, characteristic. So they have um, um, pointed uh, dark center, as I mentioned. And uh, margin often splits with the edge. You can see here the margin um, often splits. And they have pink spores and crowded gills and uh, long roots. So often you can see uh, the, the root goes inside the soil until the, the termite comes. And uh, so this is a delicious mushroom. Next one, please. Yeah, next is the Lactarius. So as you may already know, this uh, name Lactarius comes uh, because this has uh, lactose or the, the milk. So when you uh, cut or damage the, the cap or stipe, you can see this wire, <clears throat> the, the milk comes out of the protein body. So this is an indication of the, the genus Lactarius. So that's why these are called milk caps. So normally the caps are planar convex, uh, usually depressed at the center uh, and uh, in curved or in roll margin. And uh, the, the flesh is normally brittle. So when you break it, it's like chalk. You can break it very easily. This is one of the characteristics. And latex is usually white, but um, sometimes it is watery or sometimes can be uh, brightly colored when it exposed to the air. And this has decurrent gills. That means gills uh, extend to the stipe. And um, yeah, stipe is uh, brittle, as I mentioned. So these are also ectomycorrhizals. That means they are associated with ectomycorrhizal trees. Next one, please. Yeah, this is the, um, the genus that is very closely related to uh, Lactarius, Prashula. So if, most often when you find uh, some lookalikes to uh, Lactarius, so you can see whether they have uh, this milk or not. So if they don't have milk, that means these are prashula. So they look uh, similar, but one can be distinguished because of the milk. So that is lactarius. So without milk, it is prashula. So, <clears throat> so this uh, cap can be plain or depressed and um, look very similar to lactarius. And this one also brittle. That means you can easily break. And um, the taste can be mild or acrid. And no latex. So that's why this can be distinguished as uh, rashula. So this is also ectomycorrhizal. That means also associated with uh, ectomycorrhizal trees. Next one, please. So agaricus. Agaricus um, can be dis um, characterized 
because of the the chocolate brown spores or spore prints. So agaricus, uh, when it is when it is immature, you can see the gills are white, and then turns into pink, and then finally turns into chocolate brown. So sometimes people miss um, identify these mushrooms because when they are young, they are uh, the gills are white. <clears throat> that doesn't mean that it belongs to another genus. But you need to check when it matures, the gills turn into um, pink and uh, finally into chocolate brown. And also they have a prominent um, um, ring and uh, <clears throat> the cap uh, usually uh, dry and uh, gills are free. That means not attached to the, the stripe. And no volva. You don't see a volva uh, at the base. And this is a saffrobic, so growing on soil or litter or grass areas. And you don't find these growing on wood. Next one, please. And this is the sister genus of Agaricus, Micropsaliota. So very similar to uh, agaricus, but agaricus are normally big mushrooms. But microsaliota often uh, small to medium size. And <clears throat> you can see um, uh, the gills also not dark chocolate brown like agaricus. You can see like a light brown color gills and very small to medium size so this is uh, these are the uh, distinguishing characteristics of microcellular otherwise they are very similar to agaricus next one please and this is amanita so amanita contains uh, poisonous mushrooms both uh, poisonous and uh, edible mushrooms. So the one here is uh, Amanita hemibafa. This is an edible mushroom. So, and also there are some deadly poisonous ones like uh, Amanita phalloides in uh, Amanita group. That's why uh, we have to be careful when we deal with this genus. And uh, normally Amanita, uh, normally with uh, words or the um, words is like this on the surface of the cap and um, sometimes you can see uh, the ring uh, not sometimes but mostly you can see rings but uh, not um, always because some amanita don't have ring and also um, Sometimes the cap is visit or slimy or powdery. Powdery because of the uh, the universal whale remnants. And the gills are free. That means not attached to the, the stipe. Um, and annulus or ring present most of the time. And you can see a volva or bulb at the base. So these are the most common characteristics of uh, Amanita, and if you confuse this with uh, Agaricus, um, so Agaricus don't have this volva, and Agaricus uh, the gills are um, chocolate brown, but uh, Amanita the gills are white, and you have a volva at the base. Next one, please. Yeah, the next is uh, Lepiota. So Lepiota also can be confused with uh, Agaricus. But in Lepiota, you see uh, white gills. But in uh, Agaricus, you see chocolate brown gills. Otherwise, the cap uh, texture is very similar to Agaricus or Microsaliota. But uh, when you look at the gills or the spores, they are white. 
and uh, you also have a ring in Lepiota and uh, free gills same like uh, agaricus and uh, no volva so this is this uh, cannot be confused with uh, amanita because amanita has uh, a volva um so lepiota's uh, cap always dry but amanita can be slimy or viscid next one please Uh, this is Macrolepiota. So this genus is very close to Lepiota. So this genus uh, has the name Macrolepiota. Macro means big. So <clears throat> this uh, these mushrooms are bigger than normal uh, Lepiota. So that's why we call them Macrolepiota. So the gills are white, and um, also the gills are uh, free. And some uh, even can be uh, 17 centimeter, uh, the cap. And the stipe can be 30 centimeter long. So you can see uh, they are very big. And uh, many species are edible. And this can be confused with chlorophyllum molybdides, which is a poisonous one. But it has a green, uh, olive green spore print or the gills. So, but these have white gills. Next one, please. Yeah, this is the chlorophyllum molybdides, which is the poisonous one. You can see the, the gills. When they mature, they become olive green. Next one, please. So this is entoloma. So one of the uh, most beautiful mushrooms are in this genus. This is uh, the, the blue entoloma. Um, so <clears throat> this genus can be distinguished uh, based on the pink gills. So they have pink uh, spores. And cap shape uh, can be variable. There are no certain shapes. And uh, the cap can be silky or smooth. And so gills are pinkish at maturity. But uh, in the young stage, they are white. Uh, and the gills are adnate or notch. And uh, the, um, the gills uh, close to well space. You can see here. Uh, this is spaced, but sometimes it can be closed. And they grow on the ground. And most are saprops. And um, so spores are angular. Next one, please. So as I mentioned, so to able uh, to be able to identify a mushroom properly, you need to uh, <clears throat> have all these uh, characteristics clear. So otherwise, you cannot get a proper identification. That's why we always ask people to provide very good photographs uh, that you can see the above surface and the below surface and uh, all these uh, different characteristics, the cap, the ring, the stem, volva, and uh, some mushrooms, they have uh, paws instead of gills, and tubes, veins, and tooth-like things, and uh, the spore prints. So all these are important in order to uh, get a uh, positive identification. So. Uh, we often mention in these uh, the Facebook groups of mushroom identification uh, people to provide good photographs with uh, the details as as much as possible. Like where you found this mushroom, which kind of substrate, which kind of uh, trees are associated with, and what other 
important characteristics you you saw uh, with this mushroom next one please and i must say the field experience also very important when you come into mushroom identification as i mentioned earlier overnight you cannot be a mushroom like uh, expert so you need a lot of experience in the field so try to go into the field and collect some mushrooms and try to um, see whether you can identify based on the different characteristics i showed and with the experience in the field you'll be able to identify the mushrooms when you see the same mushrooms several times then you know what is this mushroom otherwise it's very difficult and these are some of the the field photographs uh, that we took uh, in thailand when we were doing uh, the field uh, collections of mushrooms and uh, i was able to uh, collect mushrooms with uh, different experts from uh, europe asia and uh, us so these uh, kind of experts um, like gave a lot of advices and uh, their experience on uh, the mushrooms so this is very important so next one please yeah here also i was with uh, some uh, world um, renowned uh, like mushroom experts like uh, dennis Desardin is a mushroom expert in the us and uh, <clears throat> elsie wellinga she is also one of the best uh, mushroom experts in the world so we had a lot of uh, mushroom field visits in thailand and i got a lot of experience and a lot of uh, like advices from them and these things are uh, were very useful for my journey next one please and <clears throat> not only um, like the experience we got and uh, also it was a lot of fun like uh, you know in tropical areas the the rain uh, are non-stop and when starts like uh, but um, when we are in the field um, we normally do not uh, care about these things like leeches or the heavy rains what we Kya is only mushrooms. So um, I must say that uh, going to the field and uh, experience the real, real um, uh, thing in the forest and try to ID some of the mushrooms by yourself, and then you'll be able to um, identify uh, those in the future. Uh, next one, please. So <clears throat> I think that's all uh, about uh, my talk. Uh, there are a lot to talk, but uh, I think given the limited time, uh, we cannot talk everything. But I, I hope uh, the, the things I shared with you are important for identification of mushrooms. So what do you have to do? Go into the field and see whether you can ID uh, some of these, uh, the mushrooms I mentioned. So all the best. And uh, if you have any questions, it's uh, time for the questions. And uh, I uh, express my sincere thanks to uh, the Asia team, especially Dr. Shanoi and Dr. Rajesh and all the team for inviting me to deliver this talk. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sam. If, uh... Are there any more questions from the audience? Yashita, please go ahead. Yashita, please unmute yourself and ask the question. Yeah, am I audible? Yeah. Oh, yes. 
so uh, I want you have mentioned about the dermatomyces group, and you have also said about that uh, not all the termite species uh, or the group can uh, can produce the termite termitomyces. So can you shed some more light onto the association between these two uh, groups, like the mac macro macro termite, right? That uh, yeah. group of termites and the associate its association with the termitomyces. Yeah, so as I said, uh, not all the termites can uh, um, cultivate the termitomyces. So, but I am not a termite expert, so I don't know how to um, identify the termites which uh, belong uh, which belong to the group Macrotermidae. But um, when you see the the termitomyces, so the associated termites are definitely uh, belong to this group Macrotermidae. So without uh, the termites, uh, the termitomyces mushrooms cannot be uh, grown. So people uh, try to see whether they can cultivate uh, termitomyces without the involvement of uh, term termites. But until now, nobody. Uh, is uh, successful in cultivating uh, termitomyces without termites. So I know some groups in China, uh, they even took the whole uh, termite mounds into the greenhouses and they then they tried the artificial um, uh, rain in, inside the, the greenhouses and tried to induce uh, the termitomyces uh, growth, but they were not successful because as soon as you disturb the relationship of uh, the termites and the, the mushroom, so um, this will not produce uh, any mushroom. So uh, there is a very complex relationship going on. Uh, in the association between these uh, termites and the mushroom. So until you uh, clearly understand this relationship, you are not able to uh, cultivate uh, the termitomyces artificially. Okay, so, so one more thing. Uh, I've come across one paper where they have mentioned that uh, they have uh, they have achieved the cultivation but that is uh, only the mycelium the mycelium was not uh, sporulating i mean the fruiting they were unable to produce the fruiting bodies so uh, uh, do you think is there there could be any method which uh, could induce uh, the sporulation or the um, or the fruiting body formation into the mycelium yeah i um, i also have seen several uh, like uh, experiments uh, like they uh, they were able to um, like uh, grow the mycelium in uh, cultures and but they were not able to induce the fruiting but uh, for my thinking i think the 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 secret is that um, the termites they might uh, secrete some uh, like chemical signals mm -hmm. in order to induce this fruiting. So if you can track these, uh, these uh, chemical signaling, I think you will be able to uh, artificially induce the fruiting with these signals. But until now, nobody has uh, done this. But uh, I am sure if you use some uh, like special probes uh, and put these probes inside the termite mounds, and if you monitor what's going on inside, mm -hmm. then you might be able to understand the relationship. All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you for uh, the insightful uh, session. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Krishna, go ahead with your question. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, as all mushrooms are saprophytes and heterotrophs, as they are not autotrophs, 
the absence of chlorophyll pigment so it is very hard for them to carry out this photosynthesis process so few species like oxymonads the absence of powerhouses of the cell so how they can prepare the atp uh could you please repeat the question i didn't uh, yes sir yes, hear sir. The as all uh, mushrooms are saprophytes and heterotrophs mm -hmm. as they are not autotrophs because which they cannot prepare their own food material and the absence of chlorophyll pigment so it is very hard for them to prepare carry out the photosynthesis process like some other plants so few yeah. species like oxymonads the absence of mitochondrial powerhouses of the cell how they can prepare atp because no one can give them atp from outside so how they will prepare the atp so the species you men mentioned is it a mushroom yes sir uh i have not uh, like heard something like this before but okay. uh, so i am sorry i i cannot uh, answer this question oh okay sir okay, sir. okay sir. i think we'll get back to your question thank you thank you sir. thank you sir. uh ramana you can have your question ask your question please unmute yourself and ask your question ramana mirthi uh good afternoon sir it was uh, really a nice session to hear from you about uh, all the identification of the mushrooms i just wanted to know that uh, are all the mushrooms uh, uh, they form ectomycorrhiza or they are symbiotic in nature or there are some class of mushrooms that are only symbiotic in nature sir yeah so um, as i mentioned uh, in my talk so some mushrooms are saprophytic so that means yes. uh, they use uh dead materials to uh, uh get the uh, nutrition for their growth so yes, some mushrooms um, they are uh, associated with ectomycorrhizal trees we call mycorrhizal uh, mushrooms so these mushrooms uh, they need these uh, ectomycorrhizal trees in order to uh, survive uh, it's a mutualistic relationship so um uh, one cannot uh, uh live without the other so okay. so this relationship is uh, very important uh, for the mushroom to uh, produce protein okay thank you sir thank you very much for your answer any more questions from the audience uh shweta rajput please go ahead good afternoon sir yes thank you so much for the talk so i have a query that while doing the microscopy how we can differentiate the uh, structures like pleurocystidia and the cylocystidia from the other structures that are present in the lamellar regions like the marginal cells and the terminal cells yeah so normally the cystidia are bigger than the normal uh, basidia or other cells so um so you can see like if if you see like uh, bigger cells uh, than the uh, basidia or other cells then you can carefully check uh, whether uh, which place of the uh, gills you find this uh, cystidia or the bigger cells so depending on the place you can see whether it is chelocystidia or pleurocystidia Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Any more questions from audience? Uh, Doctor Sam, I will ask a question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's regarding the poisonous mushroom. Uh, have you ever mapped uh, mycotoxins across the major genera of uh, poisonous mushroom so that we can differentiate uh, uh, this from the non poisonous one are there any publications related to this or are you planning your review to include such information yeah uh, so the first step uh, as i mentioned we are writing a review paper uh, on the 
deadly poisonous and uh, the other poisonous mushrooms in the world. So in this uh, review, we are going to include the full phylogeny of uh, all the reported poisonous mushrooms. And But as the second step, we can uh, do a paper for um, different poisonous uh, compounds and uh, how the phylogeny and these compounds uh, can be related. So this can be another uh, interesting paper. But recently I saw uh, in the nature, they found, uh, uh, like in the nature, uh, they published a paper, like it mentioned that uh, they found a possible antidote for the amaritine poisoning. So this is a good uh, start. That means in the future, the amaritine poisoning can be cured. All right. Rajesh, can I? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, Sam, Dr. Sam, I would like to ask a simple question. If I were a you know, beginner in you know, mushroom biology, and I'm not from a science background, assuming that, what book should I buy? Or which book should I buy from Amazon or somewhere? Um, so for um, tropical, like um, the Asian mushrooms, uh, I have not seen any uh, like uh, comprehensive uh, a guidebook for mushrooms. But you see in uh, Europe or the US, uh, they have a lot of guidebooks, very detailed, uh, very comprehensive. Uh, and you can ID almost uh, like any mushroom in those regions. But in Asia, the biggest problem is we don't have a proper guidebook. But in the future, we are planning a proper guidebook for Asian mushrooms. But there are some small guides, but those are not uh, like comprehensive enough for most mushrooms. So this is a big problem. Maybe in addition to a guidebook, maybe an app would be nice. Sorry? In addition to that guidebook, a map, uh, app, sorry, not map, an app, mobile app would be nice. Yeah, mo mobile app would be nice. The problem of apps is that uh, it's not like uh, the apps you use for uh, the plants in mushrooms is very difficult to like use apps to id mushrooms i i have seen some papers published um on this aspect like they are uh, they tried to use mobile apps uh, or the computer um apps to id mushrooms but uh, this misleads uh, the people because they think um so they, they show a certain kind of uh, characteristics to identify mushrooms so people think only these characteristics are the, the characteristic that we use for mushroom identification but uh, that's not true because uh, you cannot input every uh, each and every uh, detail into the uh, the apps because if you get a new mushroom for example, new uh, poisonous mushroom. So if it's a new character, so you don't know, the app does not know that character. And this is a big problem, but uh, I hope at least uh, some uh, apps for different groups will be developed and uh, that will be nice. But uh, uh, we have to be extremely careful uh, when we use these kind of apps because the, these apps can uh, mislead people. I mean, if you look at the commercial angle behind this idea, maybe we can develop a nice app and maybe sell it as a premium service. Yeah, of course. Like, um, also, if you can develop uh, an app uh, with the, uh, yeah, uh, mostly uh, for the localized uh, like groups, not not uh, all mushrooms uh, group uh, so this will be very useful in the thank future you. thank you
डॉक्टर अनंतिता नाग प्लीज आस्क योर क्वेश्चन यस सर आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन दैट इज देयर एनी कॉमन ऑथेंटिक पिक्चर चार्ट फॉर द मशरूम आइडेंटिफिकेशन व्हिच वी कैन कैरी टू द फील्ड टू प्रीलिमिनरी आइडेंटिफिकेशन लाइक फैमिली वाइज या आई मीन द एस आई मेंशन फॉर एशियन मशरूम्स वी डोंट हैव अ गाइड लाइक दैट but i can i can say if you want to um like refer to different genera you can go to mushroomexpert.com this uh, this web is really good web because it explains all the characteristics of mushrooms in detail like each mushroom uh, they explain what are the main characteristics and what kind of areas you find them and what are the uh, substrates and what are the uh, associated trees if they are ectomycorrhizal and this is a very good web uh, if you want to refer and want to uh, explore more about different genera mushroomexpert.com okay thank you sir thank you any more question from audience Dr. Shanoi, if there are no more questions, shall we proceed with the vote of thanks? Yes, please. Please, Dr. Anandita, please go ahead. Uh, uh, on behalf of Microsia Journal Organization team, I am uh, very much glad to express my vote of thanks to our today's speaker, uh, Dr. Shamantha, for accepting our invitation. and for your wonderful presentation on the identification of mushroom for the beginners uh, sir uh, the session is very much informative and wonderful uh, and it's uh, very much valuable and which have enlightened us uh, so we wish uh, that in coming session uh, we will get you again to enrich our knowledge about fungi and uh, now i would also like to thanks to our team members uh, to make our uh, today's event a resounding success so as we are at the end of uh, today's session i would like to uh, call uh, dr shinoy sir and uh, rajesh to continue the program uh, sir uh, now it's up to you thank you thank you so much to all of you thank you dr anand pita nan uh, uh, pradam over to you Doctor Dam. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Just let me fix a technical issue here. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Doctor uh, Sam. Thank you very much, Doctor Rajesh, and uh, thank you very much to the wonderful audience today and, uh, and wonderful discussions. And, uh, we hope to continue with this kind of uh, enthusiastic participation in coming days and months and years. Thank you, Doctor Sam. Have a nice uh, day, nice Sunday in China. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much, everyone, and the uh, Microsia team. Thank, Thank you all. Bye bye. Yeah, let's bye. close the session. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.